So let's look at a simple hydrocarbon. Um, let's say that I have liquid cyclohexane, very simple and common solvent. Here it's just pure liquid cyclohexane, number of molecules per liter. And here is cyclohexane where I try to solvate it in water, very low solubility. If I take those two numbers and plug that into the equation from the last concept, I will get that the delta G of moving from liquid to the aqueous phase is roughly plus 7 kcal. In our scale, that's a large number. And it's large because we're comparing it to RT in the denominator, or KT if you're a physicist. KT is roughly 0.6 kcal per mole at room temperature. 6 divided by 0.6 is roughly 10, or minus 10 in this case. And that's E raised to the minus 10 is going to be the relation between these two concentrations. And that's why this one number is very low. So that was plain and simple. Fun. But um, I would like to get slightly more things here. Wouldn't it be great if, in addition to delta G, I could also get my delta H and delta S so that I can study the entropy specifically? It turns out that I can. But I'm going to need to use some of my equations. In last lecture, we spent a lot of time on F equals E minus T. Yes, I need a new pen there. F equals E minus Ts. There was also another equation I used to define the thermodynamic definition of temperature. Do you remember what that one was? That was that the temperature was the derivative of the energy with respect to the entropy. But as I mentioned, today is a chemistry day. So we're going to replace that. We're going to say G equals not E but H minus Ts. And then you're going to need to believe me that this will just translate in an analog fashion, or better yet, don't believe me, prove it. That would be dG ds. We're going to need to use that equation in a second. In principle, you can think, can't I just use that equation? There is a t here. What if I take the derivative with respect to t? That would be minus s. Well, you don't know what the temperature dependence of h is, yet at least. So I'm going to use the same approach as I did last lecture and study these so-called differentials. So let's look at the very small change in g here and see what happens. So I should be able to write dg equals dh minus dts minus s dt. And now things start to look very nice because if I take this definition of temperature I have here, it literally, oh sorry, so dg there, bad Eric, it should be h because e there corresponds to h there. Good that I found that before. This number literally says that dh equals t ds, right? But if dh equals tds, that means that this term should vanish. And now I can divide this side by minus dt. And then get that s, the entropy, equals minus dg dt. And that, in particular, means if I now do exactly the same experiment, calculate the concentrations, but I repeat that at, say, three different temperatures, and take the numerical derivative, the slope of that line, that means that I can get the entropy from the slope of the line. I already had G. I got the entropy from the temperature dependence. I obviously know what temperature I made did the experiment at. That means that I can solve for H. So then we can get all these components. Let's try to draw that in a small scheme between all the possible different phases this can exist in and see if we can learn something from it. <laughs> 